your intuition is something that is underneath all of the programming. It's not something you need to find. And as you regulate your nervous system, your intuition will come online very rapidly. Welcome to Activations with JJ. In this episode, we'll be exploring some questions and answers from my recent gathering about the light body, as well as leaning into the topic of how to better develop our intuition. These topics have been at the forefront of my mind lately, and I'm excited to dive in. So let's get going. Greetings, dear beautiful souls. Welcome to another episode of Activations with JJ. I am thrilled to be with you today. And I'm also really thrilled that my voice is here with you. Because for those of you who have been with me, this is the very first week of November. Preparing for the 1111 portal. I'm getting a lot of upgrades and part of that has affected my voice. And so you know it's kind of been touch and go for me. I'm really conserving what I'm doing and being very, very intentional with when I use my voice, but I felt like what I have to say is very important. It just might be delivered to you with a little more masculine, lower voiced energy today, which is fun, right? It was interesting as I felt this coming on, I typically uh, will work with my body and just say, you know what, we don't we don't need to do full blown anything. We're just going to manage what we're doing. And My guide said, well, you don't want to see this as like a sickness. This is an upgrade. This is a full-on upgrade. And so reframe it. You're not, this isn't something wrong with your immune system. You're literally receiving upgrades right now. So I've worked through these last several days with those upgrades, and it was really fascinating. I don't know how many of you were able to join the Cosmic Dragons Conference last weekend, but it was incredible, and I was able to bring on my little blue dragon starseed and we channeled some information i would have never brought him in had i not been afraid that my voice was going to give out during the presentation so there's always a reason for everything and i know you can get those playbacks if you go to portal to ascension and you sign up to get the playbacks for the cosmic dragons conference you can hear i think it was about 10 hours of content in total some incredible speakers including my friend Flo Karuna and my friend Marissa. And the reason why I'm bringing them up today, and you might know them more from their Instagram handle, Flo is Starseed Codes, and then Marissa goes under the the Instagram handle Starseeded. But by some magic divine timing that has decided to occur, both of them are going to be in LA on November 18th. And so we are co-creating now. Before it was just with Marissa, now it's with Flo. The three of us are co-creating a workshop in Beverly Hills. Now, for those of you who cannot get to Beverly Hills on November 18th, have no fear. As I mentioned in the November energy update, there is a virtual option. And I'm telling you right now, already feeling some powerful codes coming in. It is a cosmic remembrance and light language channeling event. So just let that soak in. Like it's it's going to be just next level. I want to mention that before we keep going. And they were also in the Dragon Conference. So, you know, I mean, I'm sure dragons will show up, right? But as we move forward in this episode, I'm really excited because I will be addressing some questions that came forward in our recent channeled Q&A that occurred on the 29th of October. And the reason I'm saying that is because I do this gathering monthly, and I also include many personalized readings during the gathering. So knowing that I don't have too many one-on-one sessions available at this time, it's a great way to get that little personalized, unique reading from me. But that gathering occurred October 29th, and you can get the playback of the full gathering here. So I'm essentially answering questions that came through the Zoom chat, but I was unable and I didn't have time to answer during that particular um, meeting. So we're going to go ahead and get those started off. But before I do, 
I know we're walking into that 1111 portal and it's going to be incredible. I'm going to Sedona for a beautiful Star Mothers retreat. I'll also be gathering in person with several of you doing grid work near Sedona and doing a workshop in Sedona. My heart is so full as I've been seeing so many of you wanting to co-create and you're not going to be left out if you're virtual. Remember, I've got that virtual activation. Last year, we had over 100 people in there, and you do not want to miss it. Do you want me to tell you why? Because the energy of that many people is so intense, but expanding and beautiful. And it makes you feel like, wow, there are more star seeds on this planet than I thought. And one of the most incredible things that I experience every time I do a gathering is seeing where everybody is joining us from all over the world. So again, please, please, please consider if you've never joined a gathering before, let me tell you, this is the one that you want to join. And one of the reasons is because I have a little surprise gift for everybody who attends that, that they will be getting via email afterwards. So again, please join us 1111. All the details are below. Now, heading into all this light body questions and answers portion, that was the theme for the channel Q&A for October, and each of the Q&As has their own theme. This month, in the month of November, I will be channeling more information about the Star Mothers, something very near and dear to me. And one of the reasons why is if you haven't already heard, we launched the Star Mothers Worldwide Portal at the beginning of October, and we recently made that portal accessible to everyone. We have opened those doors wide. There are free resources for star seeds. Anyone who wants to connect more with their star families, you can click on the link below and join us in there. But again, that's one of the themes I feel coming up for November and will be included in my channeled Q&A. So let's kick off with this first question, which which was ascension symptoms and light body activation. Appearing like something that feels more like a sickness, but is really a light body activation. Looking for confirmation as I've been feeling this. Light language in any form to help relieve physical symptoms. Any other tips to help with symptoms? So I'm just reading again what was dropped into the Zoom chat of the gathering. Now, I just spoke about that, so it's funny that I'm addressing this question again, but I feel it's important. A lot of what we're going through is a shifting and a recalibrating of the way we see things, the way we experience things, the way that we think our body is reacting to something, and maybe gaining different perspectives on what that could mean. So I want you to do this, okay? When you are experiencing a physical, I'll call it a physical sensation, sometimes it might seem uncomfortable. I want you to look at it from a different angle. I want you to think, okay, well, if this wasn't that, you know, what we typically call it, a cold, a flu, whatever it is, then could it be something different? And I want you to go in and connect with the cells of your body. And tune in to what that different interpretation might be, because it might surprise you. And this is why intuition, the topic I'm going to talk about at the end of this episode, is so vitally important. Developing that ability to trust that inner wisdom, that inner voice, to tune in and trust your clairs when you are communicating with your body, not second guessing what your body is saying and not being skeptical about it because I feel like a lot of the times we are and it's okay we're the way showers we're like the very beginning of what's going to come down in like a hundred years is going to be easy peasy they're going to be like oh thank you for creating the way for us because you were able to release so much programming with regards to our reality now this person also asked about light language Light language can very much assist you with your body recalibrating, attuning, receiving the energies, being comfortable. But use your intuition. Use your intuition on what you listen to, how long you listen to it. Notice which ones resonate more for specific things and something else that my guides are encouraging me to share with you. 
is that we can open our clear audience and we can hear light language that isn't possible to hear with our physical ears. Right? So it's like things we can't see with our physical eyes. We see through our third eye. You have the same thing with your ears. Some of you might be hearing light codes coming in if you use those ears to listen instead of your physical ears. And that, those light codes can also help you with these, what we call ascension symptoms, okay? Now, the other question was just any other tips. So I'm going to tune into my Pleiadian guides, the ones who helped me channel those Pleiadian calibration YouTube videos. If you haven't checked those out, I have a series and they're for all different parts of your body. And they are extremely gifted at calibrating and attuning the body and helping us to really fully anchor in our light bodies. And what they're mentioning to us is taking a look at the foods we eat and seeing what foods we eat that are alive and what foods that aren't quite there. Foods that are alive, and I would say raw foods when I say that. I don't mean like live like the animal kingdom. <laughs> I've released the need to eat the animal kingdom stuff. But uh, the these raw foods. Now, I've gone on a raw food diet, and I did it really abruptly, and it, it was not very comfortable. So I'm not going to advise you to go on a pure raw diet right out of the blue without considering things. But just take a look at the proportion of food you're eating raw versus not raw. Because we live in our world today, we have access to raw foods in a way that we never could before. The other thing I'm hearing and sensing is fermented foods, fermented foods, allowing us to really receive those probiotics. So those are two little tips. I am not a doctor. <laughs> I am not a health professional. So this is not professional advice. If you need that, go to your doctor, go to someone else. But this is just a suggestion on how to best support that light body activation. All right, here's another question. Are you ready? This one was really cool. How many layers of light body do humans have? Do, do star seeds have some more features in their light body compared to other humans who may not have as strong of a star seed connection, particularly related to the reception of high vibrational sound? Wow, it's so fascinating that that question ties right into what I was saying with a clear audience. So I'm going to kind of go backwards with this one. I'm going to talk about the reception of the high vibrational sound. And I'm going to call in the Arcturians and channel this information from them and I'll have them come into my field right now. Now, normally I would use light language, but some of you might know I haven't really done a lot of light language because of my throat upgrades. And what they're telling me is after the throat upgrades are complete by the 1111 portal, I will be having some totally different light language come through. So I'm excited for that. But we're still going to bring the Arcturians in. They want us to remember that we're all multidimensional beings, that all of us have human aspects, star aspects. And so we look, we look at a human and we're only seeing one dimension. We're only seeing one dimension. And so remembering that, yes, depending on the dimension, that you are choosing to live out. And that might be one, that might be two, that might be five, that might be 20. It just depends on what you want to perceive through as a soul. That will determine what you're able to receive. Those of you who have decided to activate more of your multidimensionality will be able to hear sound on a more multidimensional level. And that is why you will be hearing things that other people around you might not hear. You will also be seeing things that other people around you might not be seeing. Okay, so we're going to close out with that little part of that question. Now the other one is, how many layers of light body do humans have? Hmm. This question is related to the answer of the last question about our multi-dimensionality. The layers of light body that we can have are limitless. But I believe a more accurate way to phrase that question is, 
How many layers of light body can a human activate? And what the Arcturians would like to share with us is that the layers of light body that we have activated are directly correlated to the DNA that we have activated. And so, as many of you know, there are 24 strands of DNA that at this moment in time, we could possibly have activated during this sort of epoch in this era upon Gaia. Most of us don't realize that that could occur right now. We could actually have those all activated. We could be in our physical body. But of course, we would want to do that gently, depending on the programming that we're holding and depending on the programming that our physical cells uh, is holding about what's possible, what the human body can do. Just a few weeks ago, as many of you know, someone broke the record for the marathon. Now, you can look up the exact time because I'm not going to try to quote it inaccurately right now. But the idea is that, just like when someone broke the five-minute mile several decades ago, we didn't think it was possible. Just like, you know, 400 years ago, people didn't think we were going to be able to fly. And now there are airplanes. It's all about breaking belief systems. I don't know how many of you have heard this, but I think I read it in a Dolores Cannon book. Humans have the ability to fly. But because of programming, we've forgotten how. And there are a few fun little kids shows about that and and books, which is kind of interesting because it's starting to drop back into the collective consciousness. And I'm talking about physical body. I'm not talking about astral body. So it's all about what belief systems we're holding and how rapidly we go beyond those belief systems and change our perspective, which is circling right back to the question uh, that we had at the very beginning about perspective. So much about receiving that multidimensional perspective. All right, the last question that I want to address before I drop into our final topic for today is this one. I feel crystallization of the light body. Is that a thing? If so, what is the process? How to crystallize our light body? Now, I am by no means the expert on this. You can probably look this up on the internet and find all kinds of answers. In fact, I'm going to take a quick moment right now and promote a, an incredible offering by Star Mothers Worldwide, hosted by Queenie Hilfer and Carla Macapinluck. They are coming together on the 1111 portal. And this will happen after my virtual activation, so you could kind of do it back to back. They are offering a crystalline DNA activation. It's going to be really powerful, calling in the Star Mothers, channeling the Star Mothers. If you'd like to join them, you can find out more either on the Star Mothers portal or through the link below. This is an incredible event that they're offering. But this crystalline light body activation, I'd like to call in the tall white Arcturians. That's who I feel in my field that would like to give us more information about the crystallization of the light body. They would like us to know that there are many phases of light body activation, just like there are many dimensions of the light body. And each phase corresponds to a new dimension of the light body. And there are absolutely parts of your light body that right now, every single one of you who is listening, we can confidently tell you have crystallized. There is absolutely crystalline energy running through your energetic veins, as it were. You would not be on this planet right now, in this timeline, if you had not already received those upgrades. You would not be able to hold the frequency of the Gaia that you're standing on. Okay? So as much as we feel like this planet is going <laughs> is going down, because there's a lot, of, a lot of stuff happening right now, There's a lot of trauma. There's a lot of things still happening, conflict. And we are wondering, are we there? Are we not there? Just remember, we create our own reality. We create this. And you chose at some level, whether conscious or subconscious, to be here in this planet. And the way that I'm seeing it is it's it's coming online. It's in progress kind of like when you see that bar, something's downloading to your computer and it's got that bar and it's saying 42%, you know, 77% there. 
everybody individually is a certain percent there. So that's something you can tune into. But on another level, there's no such thing as time and space. And you're 100% there. Remember my November channeled message in light language activation from Sanat Kumara, who said, you are already there. And we come back full circle because it's all about perspective. It's all about what we are perceiving is happening. We are the creators of our reality. And that is something to continue to remember. Now, we're going to wrap that up. And I want to tell those who ask those questions, if you're listening, thank you, my friends, for being willing to ask those during our gathering. I hope to see more of you at our November gathering, all about the Star Mothers. And you can check out my website if you want to know how to sign up for that. Something that I am doing that ties so beautifully in to this next topic, and it actually is like a bridge between the previous topic and then my second topic. This little bridge component here is connected to the idea that we are creators of our own reality, reclaiming our power as creators and our identity as divine children of creation. The words that I'm saying have power and you can feel that when I say that. Now the frequency that I'm holding is connected to an offering that I've been doing since March and co-creating with my friend Anna of Living from Divine. We connected with Goddess Isis, Hathor, and Green Tara to hold space for people to work with their root, sacral, and solar plexus chakras so that they feel safe in their bodies and they can restore the original divine blueprint. Now these containers are so powerful. We, we did one cohort in the spring and we are currently in the middle of doing a cohort this fall. And whenever I am sitting in this offering, it has come through so clearly that this is the key to the advancement, let's say, of humanity. That if, and it's so basic. It's so connected to my November theme of back to the basics. I mean, it couldn't get more basic than that. Go back to your initial point of creation as a soul. Returning to that place of purity and innocence. And that is why we've even created a mini offering, kind of an offshoot or inspired by the bigger one so that you can get a taste of what I am talking about. And even though our conscious mind may not fully understand what I'm saying at the deepest levels, I know you can feel the energy of what I'm saying. And if you are called to do this, the divine awakening starts on the 12th of November. And it's a two-part, it's just two-part, This is not like going to take your whole winter up. This isn't going to take your whole holiday season up. But I'm telling you, it's going to make a big difference. It is two two two-hour workshops. And they can be live. You can get the playback, however. That's all I'm going to say. I'm going to let you check it out for yourself. But again, even if you don't do that offering, the words that I'm saying to you, I want you to explore those. I want you to meditate on that. Child of creation, restoring that purity and innocence of creation. Working with those inner child soul aspects. It's a beautiful thing to begin to bring that into your awareness. All of those, all of those uh, awarenesses, let's say, and realizations will connect us even deeper to our intuition which is my final theme for this podcast. Our intuition allows us to reclaim our sovereignty and our sovereignty 
allows us to reclaim our intuition. That's what's dropping in right now for you. I'm being very intentional with the words I'm using because I feel again like I'm carrying a frequency right now where our guides are collectively helping us calibrate to reclaim those psychic abilities. And even that word isn't quite there. Our natural abilities. Our natural abilities that we were born with. To see, to hear, to experience beyond the physical. Beyond this human 3D reality. I have an incredible friend, Monica. Many of you know her from the podcast that I did about MSI practitioners. And if you heard her on there, she is one of the, just one of the most easy to get along with, like grounded people. She does not floof things up. She says it like it is. She's lived life (laughs) and she's lived life. And she's not here to just sugarcoat everything. She's here to meet you right where you're at. I don't do what I do to put myself on a pedestal and say I have every single answer for you. And so one of the reasons I promote other people and their offerings here is because I truly believe they have some incredible gifts that some of you, some of you might feel called to take advantage of and to connect with. And so for those of you looking to develop your intuition, Monica's offering Intuition Academy also starts on the 12th of November. And this is, I believe, a month-long offering, which includes group and one-on-one with her, which is, um, you know, going to be just blow your mind, I promise you. I have personally mentored Monica for, for months and, you know, she graduated long ago. That's what I say. But I've worked with her, right? We've, we've, we've literally transitioned from, you know, teacher and student to, to colleague. And that's where she's at. And what her level of ability with taking you from where you are and helping you move forward with reactivating your psychic senses is beyond compare. And the reason is she will put you at ease. She will allow you to be comfortable. That's the space that she holds. Now, I'm saying this not thinking that every one of you is going to do the Intuition Academy. I know that's not possible for everyone, and not everyone will feel called to. So let me boil it down a little more so you have some takeaways from this blurb about intuition. Your intuition is something that is underneath all of the programming. It's not something you need to find. And as you regulate your nervous system, your intuition will come online very rapidly. And I think that's why last month and the month before, if I remember right, I kept talking about the nervous system. And then it came in Bringers of the Dawn by Barbara Marciniak. Monica holds space for your nervous system, and that's why she's so good at teaching intuition. If you can hold space for yourself in a way that will allow your nervous system to be regulated, you will notice you'll see more, hear more, feel more. And this is just like dropping in right now. Sometimes I get these aha moments when I'm recording, so... Thank you to my guides for all this that's coming in and yours. I definitely feel all of your guides when I when I create these. But the idea is that we can return to that innocence of that inner child who is willing to feel, who is willing to see, and not judge. One of the reasons that we oftentimes don't have that wide open third eye or, or fully accessible claircognizance is because our big person, our adult self, is still 
connected to so much programming that would cause us to misinterpret what we receive. And that is being delivered, especially for you right now, through my channel from my guides. (laughs) And I'm like, as it comes out, I'm like learning with you right now in real time. So think about it. Think about it for a moment. It's really helping me understand too because I've worked with so many of you and a lot of the biggest issues is like I can't see my guides. I can't feel my guides. I don't know. And then a lot of times people will come to me with this phrase, will you ask my guides? Will you ask my guides? Now as a mentor to model for you how to communicate with the guides and hold space, I, I, can, I can do that. But I want you to watch the way you word things. Because as you say that, you're actually saying, you know, like, I can't, maybe. And so think about when you, when you work with someone like me and you're asking a question like that. Maybe you could rephrase it to say, can you accompany me and help me connect with my guides? Hold space for information to come through both of our channels and then see what happens because like I said we're transitioning from needing a guru to sort of this co-channeling co uh, co-healing like I said in the monthly energy update and then fully self-sufficient it's stair steps stair steps so whatever your path is to your intuition It truly begins with that nervous system. And I'm excited for you as you learn this information. And whether or not you step into Monica's incredible Intuition Academy or you feel drawn to another offering, trust yourself. That final message of the November 2023 Energy Update, trust yourself. All right, my friends, I'm going to wrap up. I've just like my voice has lasted. I'm so thrilled. I hope you enjoy this different tone that I'm that I'm channeling through a little bit lower here. But again, so much, so much coming forward for us. We've got this 1111 portal. Let's make it incredible. I've got a light language activation coming out for that. And I'm telling you, it's going to be different. It's going to be new. The offerings for the 1111 portal that I have, that my friend Queenie and Carla have, and then following the next day, it's like a new beginning. I've got my divine awakening, if you're called to that. Monica has her intuition academy, which if you sign up for and say that I sent you, you will have free access to my psychic activation course, my on-demand psychic activation course. So there's your, your bonus right there. And then following the heels of that, this incredible cosmic remembrance ceremony with my friend Flo and Marissa as well. So much. We're, we're very, very much in a time of expansion and sovereignty. Just remember that. I am so blessed to have you with me as part of this community. I have a lot coming around the bend that I'm just going to give you little hints here and there from now until the end of the year. January is going to mark some very big changes, and I feel big shifts coming for me in my offerings. Some of you are probably feeling the same, and we're all here together. We're all on this journey together. How incredible is that? I'm sending you so much love, and as always, I'm reminding you that I am you, and you are me. And we are we. Until next time.